49ers two-minute drill on a day with some news. Brandon Ayuk met with the 49ers, a meeting that he requested. Highly unusual to hear of a contract standoff turn into a face-to-face -face meeting during the dead period. We're in late June, so normally stuff doesn't happen around the team facility at this time of the year. But it did indeed happen today at the 49ers facility. Ayuk told Ryan Clark that he'd be meeting with the 49ers because his feelings have been hurt during this negotiation process. He's taken some of the 49ers' offers personally because the 49ers are not offering as much as Brandon Ayuk wants. I will say that it is important to underscore throughout all of this how important Brandon Ayuk has been to Brock Purdy. Just take a look at this. This is from our friends at Field Vision. X-axis EPA per play when targeted. Y-axis average success rate. This is all from last season. So you want to be up and to the right. By the way, look at Kyle Juszczyk. Doesn't have a big target share, but Kyle Juszczyk is in truly elite position. Brandon Ayuk, though, in really, really good position as well. The size of the dot is the average depth of target. So Brock Purdy generally targets Brandon Ayuk about 14 yards downfield. It's a very, very important field stretching mechanism for the 49ers. But the EPA per play when targeted, really good, 0.81. It's the best of any 49ers target, even higher than Kyle Juszczyk and George Kittle. He's got an absurdly high number for tight ends. Ayuk is important to the 49ers. There's no doubt about it. But there's also no doubt about the fact that the 49ers have leverage here. Ayuk doesn't have leverage. And, you know, so many people are saying, oh, Jaden Daniels was with Brandon Ayuk when he told Ryan Clark that he'd be meeting with the 49ers. Big deal. Also, don't make that sound like Brandon Ayuk wants to play with Washington when Ayuk messaged himself today that he would most rather stay with the 49ers. That's literally part of this report. You can read it with your own eyes right here. Ayuk's first choice is to stay in San Francisco. That's obviously information coming from either him or his agent, Ryan Williams, who was part of this meeting today. But he is comfortable playing elsewhere if they are willing to trade him. The end of that sentence is merely lip service. The first part expresses Ayuk's preference. And regardless of his preference, the 49ers have him under contract at a number that they really really like. I just tweeted this. I'll read it to you. This was a little bit ago. We analyze these negotiations in business terms. Leverage and deadline pressure are frequently used ones. And deadline pressure won't become a factor for Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers for another month. But there's a human aspect here too. Negotiations can be stressful. Players aren't robots. So waiting for ideal timing to maximize leverage isn't easy. And that seems to be important context behind this meeting. Ayuk hasn't taken the 49ers offers well, and he stands to benefit from the face-to-face -face meeting to clear the air and rediscover a more productive track. It does not mean an extension is imminent, but both sides must tend to the human aspect of this if they have any chance of expediting the process. Also, I mentioned that Brandon Ayuk cannot force a hand of anybody. Somebody asked me, what if he forces their hand? What would a good trade package be? I cannot force a hand. He has no leverage. The 49ers own all of it. Don't lose, don't lose sight of the fact that the ongoing negotiations are about rewarding Brandon Ayuk a year early. He's under contract this season for 14.1 million. That is a very favorable rate for the 49ers. They're incentivized to replace that with a long-term deal, but only very much on their terms. Only one that fits into their budget with appropriate flow control so they can manage the salary cap into future years. So the 49ers can hold firm until Ayuk agrees to a contract that matches those parameters. That's called leverage. The 49ers certainly have it in this case. Moving on to the sandwich of the day. Food's always part of the two minute drill the sandwich of the day hannah b coffee here in nashville you go to the east part of town it's this breakfast sandwich with cream cheese on it it was one of the best breakfast sandwiches that i have ever had i will give it that high endorsement i've been looking for a good one out here and i also found a good lunch sandwich on dutch crunch spoiler alert today that's going to be featured at some point in the future but you can make sure you get the one with it's obviously fried egg 
bacon, avocado. They put lettuce and tomato on it. I know that may be polarizing for some people and breakfast sandwiches, but I think it was the cream cheese that totally put it over the top. That is the sandwich of the day featured here on the 49ers two-minute drill. Now, this two-minute drill is probably going to last eight minutes. I'm already at six minutes, and we're not done yet. So sometimes it happens. Sometimes the two-minute drill has to be a little bit longer than other days. And today, you know, with the unusual move of Brandon Ayuk requesting a move or requesting a meeting with the 49ers, flying out to the Bay Area on a private jet, one of Sammy Sutton's private jets. By the way, I don't think that it was the 49ers flying him out. I can't say that with certainty, but some people were saying, oh, the 49ers must have flown him out. That must have been Jed York doing him the favor. No, Sammy Sutton, he has a private jet rental company and a lot of professional athletes will fly around on his jets and then tag him on social media. Brandon Ayuk tagged Sammy Sutton. So this makes me think this was on Brandon Ayuk's dime or at least uh, sponsored by Sammy Sutton. So, so Brandon Ayuk was the one that procured the private jet to get to the Bay area for this meeting. I will say that Brandon Ayuk is the first one to publicize that he was in the Bay area. We made a show about that yesterday. So that means that he wanted word of this out there. And I think that when we look at some of the uh, tweets about this, including Ari Mayroff's tweet, which is right here, uh, it, it this sounds like it, it came from Brandon Ayuk's camp, that they wanted that message out there. So the 49ers have the leverage. Ayuk seems eager to you know, repair whatever personal rifts were created by the 49ers offers, which obviously... He at least initially considered low ball offers. It's something that that I predicted here a few weeks ago when Justin Jefferson signed the mega deal. The situation was ripe ground for receivers being upset because if you wanted more money, you didn't necessarily have to ask for Jefferson money. If you just wanted more money in the chasm that Jefferson created between him and everybody else, you're bound to be disappointed because, again, the 49ers and, and teams here have leverage with players already under contract. That being said, we have uh, Brandon Ayuk being extremely important to what the 49ers are trying to do. And that's what this data, check out Field Vision, the really, really cool new startup. And, and they've got all this good data. Uh, you could see just where Brandon Ayuk fits into the puzzle for the 49ers. And it's in a very, very important spot. All right, two minute drill, eight and a half minutes this time. We'll try to keep it closer to two next time, but it's just the name. More content, more information, I think, is something that nobody will argue with. Talk to everybody very soon.